Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Alkids Books Illustrators and Dialogue Panel. My name is Taylor Lytle Hewlett, and I'm the Marketing and Publicity Coordinator here at Alkids Books. I'm excited to be moderating this discussion today, which is our first panel of the day. In this discussion, we'll be highlighting some of our newest picture books publishing this fall in conversation with their illustrators. Before we begin, I'd like to gratefully acknowledge that our office in Toronto, which is also where I'm broadcasting from today, is located on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Chippewa, the Wendat, the Anishinaabek, and the Haudenosaunee peoples. I'd also like to acknowledge that the land Toronto sits on is covered by Treaty 13, known as the Toronto Purchase, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. As publishers of children's books, we take seriously our responsibility to educate our audiences about the history and legacy of colonialism and its impact on Indigenous peoples, and we're dedicated to working towards a just and equitable future. Our panelists and all of our attendees are joining us from many different places today, so I encourage you all to learn more about and reflect on the land that you're joining us from today and its history. With that, Next, I'd like to introduce our panelists and their books. So first up is 100 Japatis, a picture book for ages four to seven, publishing this October. It follows a young boy and his grandfather as they make 100 Japatis while waiting for news of the boy's new baby siblings arrival. It's written by Derek Mascarenas and illustrated by Chantala Robinson, who is joining us today. Chantala Robinson is an illustrator and fine artist her artwork is inspired by both her urban and natural surroundings and by her young son and daughter. Chantala lives in New Westminster, British Columbia with her husband and children. She grew up eating chapatis and sometimes she would try making them with her aunt and they were never perfect circles. That's a call back to the book. Um, next up we have Cone Dog. So Cone Dog is a picture book for ages three to seven and it's publishing this September. In the book, Emma the dog comes to learn that the pesky cone around her neck can actually be a doggy dream come true through some resilience and a bit of creative problem solving. It was written by Sarah Howden and illustrated by Carmen Mock, who's joining us. Carmen Mock is an award-winning illustrator whose previous works include Cone Cat and When I Listen to Silence. She lives in Toronto, Ontario with her husband and her two cat studio managers. We'll also be talking with Nahid Kazemi, the illustrator of Love is in the Bear. Love is in the Bear is a picture book for ages four to seven that celebrates friendship and the arts through the story of Bird and Bear, two friends who decide to audition for the Forest Opera. It publishes in October and it was written by Judith Henderson. Love is in the Bear was illustrated by Nahid Kazemi, an illustrator and multidisciplinary artist who has published more than 65 children's books. She won the 2022 Governor General's Literary Awards in Canada and has been nominated for the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award. She was Ibi Canada's Joanne Fitzgerald Illustrator in Residence for 2018 and the TD Summer Reading Club Illustrator for 2022. And she lives in Montreal, Quebec. So now that I've introduced the books and their illustrators, I'd like to give a warm welcome to our three panelists. So panelists, please join us with your cameras on and we will get started. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. So moving on to the discussion, um, I have a few questions prepared for us to talk about. So there's a lot of work that goes into the illustration process long before getting started on the final spreads that readers are going to see in a book. So first, I'm hoping you can each talk a bit about your planning and drafting process. So what are some of the first things that you do when you receive a manuscript? Um, Chantala, let's start with you. Well, the first thing is reading it. And um, and I just sit with it for a long time, I think. Um, I just sort of let the story stew in my mind. And I think that part's really important. It's not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not putting pen to paper. I'm not sketching. I'm not doing anything but I'm letting the images flow in my mind. I'm letting ideas come to me. And that's the part that I really had to get used to as an illustrator because you, you always want to get started right away. But I find um, letting that, that story just, just be in my mind and holding it there um, at first is actually one of the most important things I can do. That is an absolutely perfect answer, reading it. Um, Carmen, what about you? 
Um, I, yeah, I think the first impression um, when I'm reading it is very important. Um, I will try to uh, see like if I can have images came across in my head when I'm reading the manuscript. So if I'm able to visualize something from the story, and I feel that that is the right project for me. So I think trying to visualizing, you know, the story, um, maybe some scenery or, you know, some images about the character, I think that's a, a good start for me. Yeah, that makes sense. And Nahid, what about you? Oh, I think you're still muted, Nahid. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> I I also just read it, you know, uh, and I try to understand it, try to figure out what does the story is giving to the kids. Do I have any idea for the book? Mm, does it fit to my style? Or uh, is what really the story is? telling us and um, what does the story really want to say mm, is it worth to work uh, to take time on such a story or not you know and um, and I try to uh, to just think about and uh, to figure out uh, to imagine um which kind of book uh, will be the final product, you know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so kind of shifting from the reading and the visualization process, next I'm hoping you can each talk about your illustration process a bit. So for example, what mediums you use to create your work, um, maybe how long it takes you to create a finished spread from a book, um, Nahid, let's keep going with you. Uh, yeah, actually, um, uh, um, when I'm reading the story, uh, I think about uh, all, I think about my technique, maybe materials, uh, but when I work, everything is different. Everything changed. And at the um, beginning of each book, as if, I never, I have never done this, you know, it's a kind of a new start. And at the beginning, uh, there is always a big challenge. Uh, but I try to tell myself, uh, uh, you are not supposed to do the best things. You are supposed to do something ordinary and it's enough. And you are just supposed <laughs> to do uh, so I can start, you know, it, it helps me to start always. And it helps me to do, the, and sometimes I tell myself, uh, listen, just try to enjoy doodling and just try to enjoy making characters and just try to enjoy, just enjoy drawing. It's enough for now. And no need to think about the next steps, just enjoy drawing. <laughs> uh, this way, I can make it easier for myself. I can make it uh, uh, more enjoyable. And after a while, I just oh, I did a lot. And so most of the time, I um, I finish a book fast when I think this way. But if I think that okay, you should be perfect. I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I think the starting is the hardest part. So it's good to yeah. free your mind of those expectations. Yeah, um, during drawing, just I find the, the technique um, and all the palette, the, the personalities, characters, all the style of the yeah. And I was lucky in the office to see um, some finished art actually from Love is in the Bear back when we had it to scan and put it into the book. Um, and I'm wondering what mediums did you use for that? Was that pencil crayons? Was it watercolors? No, it's um, a pigment. I use pigment 
Um, but the way that it uh, seems watercolor, it, it has a story because, you know, first years that I came to Canada, I had a small studio that I was living in and I was working in and I didn't have enough place and I was working with watercolor. But every time I used to actually pour the water on my spritz. So uh, I found a technique that I don't use, no need to use water, but looks like watercolors. It was the best. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I definitely had a moment of thinking it was watercolors. <laughs> um, Chantala, what about you? Can you talk a bit about your process, your mediums? Yeah, sorry, it's a little bit noisy behind me right now. So if you can't hear me, let me know. Um, You're good. <laughs> okay. I, I start, I see, I think Nate's right. Like I, the process of enjoying it to begin with is really important. Um, having fun, sketching, playing with color, experimenting with all the different ideas that come in my mind after I read the manuscript. Um, what I do is I, I'm not one of those artists that, you know, can sketch something and then produce a finished piece um, on one piece of paper beautifully. My, my process more is more about building. And I feel like I always build artwork. And um, so I do a lot of layers. I paint pieces of paper with acrylic paint. I cut that, the, paint, the pieces of paper into shapes and I uh, collage the shapes together uh, until it makes something resembling art, like the, the picture I have in my head. And then I use pencil crayon on top of that to add details. Oh, I scan that in and then I do some yeah, digital that's, that's work on top of that. So it's a lot of different parts that um that I have to do. And it's 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 time consuming. Um so I'm always looking for ways to shave that down a little bit and to make my work a little bit more efficient. But I always seem to go back to this process of sort of building, you know, layers upon layers of art. And um, one of the first things I do actually is when I, I look at my calendar and I see, I try to see, okay, how long do I have for each part of this process? Um, and I try to block it off. So for example, I paint, I paint, I use a acrylic paint and I paint paper. So that part, that's super fun. I get to just like sit there and paint paper. So I might have like a week to do that. And then um, getting down, cutting out the shapes, that's another two weeks. So um, I always, I, I, you know, like each, with each book I do is like perfecting the technique. And so, well, not perfecting, trying to improve. I don't feel like I can ever perfect it really. But um, the, the last part, the digital part is always, it's always the part that I'm like, ah, oh, I'm running out of time. And now I have to do all nighters, you know, because um, I never could quite get the timing down quite perfectly. It's always a work in progress. Yeah, and I imagine with the digital part too, it's so easy to be, oh, I could just tweak this a little bit more. What if I edit this a little bit more once it's on the computer? But all those layers definitely come through in the final illustrations. They're so beautiful with the layers and textures. It's amazing. Thank you, yes. Um, and Carmen, what about you? I found um, sketching, like in the beginning stage, when I sketch, uh, you know, the character, scenery that is the most challenging part for me because there are a lot of possibility I'm developing um, the character just to make sure that the character looks right to me. So during the earlier stage of my creation, it's more like it take up more energy and my brain works really crazy actively to um, get the ideas. And then sometimes the ideas in my head doesn't mean that I could transfer that through my hand to my paper. So the struggle sometimes in between that. So um, I would say the early part is more challenging than making the final art. So once the sketches and all the ideas approve and everything's confirmed. When I start making the final art, I found that the final art making time is the most relaxed time to me. 
because I just enjoy it and just keep on making it. So um, when talking about like how long it takes to finish a spread, it really depends on the complexity of that piece of illustration. Sometimes it could take a week or 10 days to finish a piece that if the illustration is very complex, sometimes could be uh, shorter. But I work with traditional media. So which is um, usually I like to use gouache. Uh, gouache is like an opaque watercolor and the ink and color pencil or the dry pastel. So I start with some uh, gouache, you know, as a base, and then I keep adding layers and layers. And then I use color pencil or pastel to create the texture. So the process takes time to develop because for the watercolor, once you add it, you can't go back. So that I need to, you know, keep adding layers and layers until I feel, okay, this is just right, then I stop. And then the color pencil and pastel will give, add more texture and details on the illustration. And then after that, I have to transfer my piece, like my art into digital format by scanning my art. And then I still have to do some digital touch up if needed. So the whole process to finish a piece, um, it takes time and it, it has to be, uh, make sure every step works right. And so that's not like a fast making process, but I still really enjoy it so much. Mm -hmm. I actually have a quick follow-up question because you were talking about drafting the characters. I remember back when Cone Cat came out, we talked about how many drafts of Jeremy the Cat, you had pages and pages, we were trying to figure out the design of him. Was it a similar process with Emma the dog or did she come to you a bit quicker? Well, thank goodness, the Cone Dog is easier. <laughs> It just, it just, I thought about like what kind of dog that I should put on this book. So that takes me sometimes to decide because there are a lot of different, you know, good looking dog in the world. So that is the hard time to decide. But once I decided, I tried to sketch and that's um, not as difficult as the Concat Jeremy, but I still love you know, my cone dog, and I will show my arts, you know, later on, you know, to, to introduce to you about this cone dog. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll be showing spreads from all of the books later. Yeah. Um, so zooming out from what we've been talking about a bit, um, picture books are really a collaborative effort between authors and illustrators. Um, and that process and collaboration, it looks a bit different depending on the project. And I think it looked a bit different for each of you as well. So I'm hoping you can each talk a bit about that. So for example, Carmen, this was your second collaboration with Sarah Howden as an author after Cone Cat. So what did that process look like for you? Was it more collaborative? How did it look? Well, it's, it's sort of like um, a second book that I co-create with uh, Sarah Howden, but the story is totally different. The character is totally different. So I feel like this is another brand new story. But the good side is I, um, I had several conversations with Sarah when we are, um, you know, promoting and sharing about Comcat. And then we met on Zoom for a couple of times. So definitely it makes me uh, a lot easier or I should say um, less anxious about what authors think about my um, my creation because um, we kind of like know each other and we, we she, she saw my art, she saw Concat. So uh, she has idea about, you know, what is going to happen. So I, I hope it's not like a big shocking to her when I create 
the Kong dog. That is one thing. So uh, it's definitely it's more enjoyable and, and less anxious when I'm making this book uh, with the second time, you know, work with an author. Yeah, and building on that existing trust and that working relationship. You both know each other in your work. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, Chantala, what about you? This was your first time working with Derek. Was there some collaboration there? Was it a bit more liaised through editorial? What did that process look like for you? For for me and Derek, the it was through it was through uh, the art director. Um, we met and we chatted, but we never directly discussed the artwork with each other. And I think for me, that's. Uh, partly deliberate because um, I think, I mean, I'm open to talking more, but I'm, I'm comfortable just working on my own and getting feedback and incorporating that feedback and then coming back with more ideas. And I think um, it's just the way I work. Uh, I think uh, Derek was kind enough to uh, allow me to have my own ideas. Um, and and express them but we were quite similar and on the same page we found and um i think it was it was such a simple and lovely and easy process um to to do that but that's always i it, that's always been my style to work quite independently um i find my ideas flow and i can't if I don't think about what someone else wants, and I think mainly from the reader's point of view, as children, I find that that I my work comes out a little bit better that way, and I'm always open to adapting and changing it uh, at each stage. Actually, so um, that's that's where my comfort level is. Yeah, and it's always amazing to see like when that independent work comes together because the text is created independently as well. So when those things are able to come together and meld so well and create a story and a picture book, it's it's really wonderful to see. Um, and then Nahid, I'm wondering if this process was a bit different for you because Judith Henderson, the author of Love Is in the Bear, is a friend of yours. So was there a bit more collaboration there? Yeah. Judith is my friend and at the time I was living nearby her and we used to go to a coffee shop and have coffee and croissant together especially in winters and uh, speaking about talking about uh, story illustration what is new in the city about new books and we used to share our stories together um, uh, one time um, before working on uh, Love is in the Bear, um, uh, she uh, she read for me uh, a few stories. And I, as, she, as Judith Henderson is a great composer, you know, and I really, uh, I, I really like uh, the playfulness uh, in the stories. And I think, um, her um, music art has a good impact on her stories. I really like her stories. Uh, and I was enjoying every time uh, she read a story for me. The day that uh, she read Love is in the Bear for me, I remember I was, uh, she was reading and I was drawing on the uh, my croissant's pocket, you know? And I was making a character on my croissant pocket. And uh, when I uh, when I um, uh, when I went home, I asked her to send me the story because I love I, I loved it and I wanted to read it again, you know. And after a few, we even I don't think we didn't uh, think about collaboration. It was something that happened later because um, again I realized that I really liked this the story was meaningful was fit 100 person fit my style I I really enjoyed making the characters the bird the, the beer and the, then um, a few days I, I just draw the the bear and the, the best was the one that I made on that uh, cross on pocket, you know. 
um, and eventually I used that one. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, uh, I'm grateful always that Judith Henderson wrote this story. It's one of my um, favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a wonderful story. I'm very curious. Did you keep that croissant wrapper? Or did you rip off the piece that had the initial bear design? It. I should find it. I guess we have. <laughs> You'll have to send us a picture of it when you find oh, it. But sure, I, I, I love that you kept I that. I will find it for you. <laughs> that's that's a really great story. I love that. Um, so moving on away from the art and the process, um, something that I always love to hear about and see. Um, and I know a lot of other people love to see because they're always very popular when we post them on social media, um, is pictures of artists' workspaces and studios. So I'm wondering what each of your workspaces are like. Like, do you have a studio um, or do you have to curate a specific mood or environment to make you work? Do you have like a specific coffee mug you have to have next to you while you're illustrating or is it a bit more free form? Um, Chantala, let's start with you. I have uh, an office in my house that I, it's the office space I share with my husband. Um, but I've sort of, my area's grown and expanded and his has sort of shrunk because I keep adding more art supplies and I've got, I've got my desk and all my art supplies spread out everywhere. Um, and I make a huge mess every time I work. It's like crazy, there's, you know, it's, it's just a giant mess. So I spend quite a bit of time at the end of every session cleaning up and I can't start my next session until everything's back in place. So it's a very sort of, uh, it, it's, it's a routine I go through that helps me clear my mind. And sometimes, you know, I go to my my studio space and it's a huge mess. And as, I, as I'm cleaning, I'm thinking about the colors, I've been using the materials and I'm tidying up. And I see Carmen, like that little, that rolling cart. I have one of those too, with very similar to that with all my art supplies there. And I've got my easel and my desk and my computer. So it's, um, I find, I like the routine of cleaning and making mess, cleaning and making mess. And it's, um, it's, part, of, it's part of it now for me. So I don't know what I would do if I actually had my own dedicated studio. <laughs> I would change things a lot. It's good that you like both parts of the process equally, because I can imagine it would be a bit trickier to navigate if one outweighed the other. Well, I've had to learn to. <laughs> that is very true. Um, Carmen, what about you? Um, I just moved about two weeks ago, so everything starts fresh and new. So um, in a way, it's good because everything right now is pretty clean and messy as well because some of them are in boxes. But what you see right here, it looks really tidy and clean because I just start unpacking stuff and organize my, my art supply and everything. So even you look at the cart right behind, I still have some empty space there. I haven't filled up yet because some of my art tools still in boxes. But basically in, in, in my studio, it's like a home studio. I have uh, three desks. So the one you see at the back, the brown one, it's like a floatable desk. So when I need a really big uh, workspace that I like to um, put all my sketches or some um, art, um, you know, a bigger piece of art to work, I would just open up that table and I don't really care about mess it up or dirty, whatever, but I will get like a, a long, like a, a six feet long workspace for me. And then the second desk is the one that I'm in front of me, it's my computer desk. So when I need to uh, reply email, um, doing presentation like right now, or touch up my digital art, then I use this computer. And then next to it, that's my third desk that I keep my scanner, printer, uh, and my cutting mat right next to me. So this is my whole cave. I work around like three desks every day. And as Taylor mentioned earlier, I got to studio manager. That's my cats, Lily and Tommy. So um, if I let them in, 
Lily always like to sit right on top of this cabinet, right where the concat is. So she likes to sit there and watching behind me. So she's definitely a manager trying to make sure my work for performance is productive. And then Tommy likes to sit right by the window here. And so that's, you know, I got two managers kind of helping me during the day. So um, that's my world. So I still got a, some kind of knickknack that I should put it on the wall. And that's, you know, my favorite item that will inspire me, but I haven't put those little items on the wall yet, but it will come next time. I hope next time one of your studio managers makes an appearance too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they will be jumping in front <laughs> of the camera and then stepping on my keyboard and something like that. I'm, I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our last question just cause we're running a little bit short on time. Um, and it's a fun one to wrap up on. I always love asking this question. Um, what is your favorite spread from your book? Um, so Nahid, oh, actually, Nahid, we didn't get to you about the studio question. Let's do that first. Um, can you talk a bit about your studio space? Um, I always need a separate place where I can leave it, whatever it is, no need to clean it, no need to, um, and I can lock it whenever I have a guest. But actually, I use all the all my home for, for to work, my living room, kitchen, maybe it's I don't feel any limits. Even the days that I had just uh, a small studio, I used to uh, actually it was it looked like a workplace, not a place to live. I was just living in a corner and all the studio was actually is, uh, has been devoted to work, you know. Uh, I have a um, table to drawing, drawing table. I have my computer, a scanner, synthetic, uh, iPad. Uh, uh, what else I should say? <laughs> That's it. But it I'm is a really... I'm going in one month. I'm going to a bigger place that uh, I'm gonna have a bigger space. And um, actually, um, it's my dream to start to paint after years, you know, um, because uh, I had a small workplace and I had to illustrate during all these years, but I really miss painting. I would like to have a bigger place to start to uh, paint a little bit. Yeah, I'll be excited to see that bigger space as it develops and as you move in there. Um, so back to the last questions, favorite spreads. Nahid, let's keep going with you. Can you talk a bit about your favorite spread from the book? I think we have it. We're going to show it up on screen. Yeah, uh, my favorite page is the one that uh, actually is the opera spreads. Uh, I like that because uh, a kind of humor and the seriousness at the same time there is in this spirit and the, the beard the sings from her from its heart and the bear is listening from its heart and you know and uh, I love uh, the gesture of the frog and all the uh, creatures around. Yeah, it's a really beautiful spread. Thank you. Glad you like it. Mm -hmm. um, and then next up, Carmen, can you talk a bit about your favorite spread or spreads, plural? <laughs> well, if I have to pick one, the, the favorite one, it's very difficult. So I pick three and I like to hold up and show you. And this is the, the first one that I really like. So this is the cone dog and her name is Emma. And I like this one. Emma is kind of like very relaxing on her bed. And she was holding uh, this little guy that's her favorite toy. And I, I really like the, 
her facial emotion on this piece. And then the second one is this one that is in the winter scene. So Emma got a cone on her neck, but it was like holding the snow. And you will find out when you're reading uh, Cold Dog, and this is Emma's neighbor. His name is Keith. And he is trying to steal Emma's um, food. So something is going to happen on this bread. And then the last one I like the most is this one. It's very energetic. It's like, bark. <laughs> And then Emma was like, wow, kind of flew away. So you will be able to uh, find out, you know, when you read the cone dog and you will see the emotion and the facial expression on this book and on Emma's face. I love that one with the snow flying everywhere. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, and Chantala, what about you? What's your favorite spread? Well, I think this one is my favorite just because I really like it when it, the illustration turns out just as I see it in my head. So, um, you know, it was just easy to execute this one. And um, I, I like the composition and the movement in it. And I was able, you know, not all of them turn out exactly how I want them to. But uh, this one, I found out that it has a, that your, your eye can travel around it nicely. And so it's exactly like I wanted it in my head. Um, but you know, you, you learn to appreciate different things about your own, your own artwork as you go as hard as an artist to, um, I find to, to look at it, um, with dispassionately, you know, uh, I, I always have my own opinions and I'm always like super hard on myself. So <laughs> I think that's pretty normal for artists. So yeah, no, this one is great. It really captures the, like, baking and cooking and flour flying everywhere. Like it puts you right in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, well that I think was a lovely note to end on. So thank you everyone for participating in this panel. This is a great discussion. Um, and thank you to our attendees for joining us for this discussion. Um, a note to the attendees, you can read and review the books we just talked about on Edelweiss and NetGalley by following the links down in our booth. Uh, and don't forget to come back to our booth later today to check out the rest of our panel discussions. We've got one at 12.50 p.m. and one at 3.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And check out School Library Journal's Traditions, Celebrations, and Special Days panel at 11.05 p.m. or a.m. Eastern to hear the authors of two of our New Falls books, 100 Chapatis, which we've been talking about here and you just saw some lovely art from, and Alia's Secret, A Story of Ramadan. So thank you again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.